I've seen a lot of technically great dribblers who can't pass. They're good on 1v1, but they hurt the team. But coaches see them as the best player. Okay, so there's quite a bit to unpack here. So for starters, depends on which age groups we're talking about here. If it's under 12 years old, I'm actually not always against a kid being a little bit of a ball hog. Yeah, in fact, with some of the youngest kids, I almost am happy to see ball hogs. And the reason I state this is if a kid is a ball hog at the youngest age groups, it usually means they have confidence, they're learning their technical dribbling skills, and they're willing to try things even if it means making mistakes. However, at the older age group, so we'll say 12 years old and up, yeah, you eventually have to learn to be part of a team. You're part of a collective unit, not an individual. And you literally just can't do everything by yourself. Not Messi, not Maradona, not Pelé. They all had to pass and all had to work as part of the team. Now, here's the thing. Johan Cruyff once stated that if you have a player that dribbles too much, the solution isn't to tell them to stop dribbling, but rather to move them up to a higher age group so the standard is higher, so they have less success, so they learn to when and when not to dribble. And I actually mostly agree with this because one of the problems I see with a lot of youth coaches, and I used to see this all the time, is coaches would scream at a kid for doing a 1v1 in the wrong scenario especially if they lost the ball. Now, if they were successful, the coach would just ignore it because they're successful. And then the kid is scared to try 1v1s. And I don't want a kid to be scared to try 1v1s. But also, if we're looking at the highest levels of soccer, we're talking college soccer to the professional level, semi-professional as well as an in-between the best passers of the ball are very oftentimes also very, very good dribblers. And the best playmakers are almost always good dribblers. And the reason for this is if you can dribble or pass, you're substantially more difficult to defend than someone that they know is literally just going to pass the ball every single time or the player who is too selfish and always goes 1v1. The defenders that don't know what you're doing are the ones that are going to get beaten. If you can beat someone 1v1, they have to always be prepared for that. So when you make the pass, the pass is easy. It's open. But if you're constantly making very good passes, moving the ball quickly, that second or third time when you decide, ah, I'm going to take them on 1v1 this time, the defenders may be not ready and you can beat them. And this is one of those things that I always point out to my players most of the game you are playing relatively simple however the more tools you have in your locker be that some dribbling skills some tricks and flicks or even just raw pace to pace abuse some opponents the more options you're going to have in a game and it's going to make you a more effective and more dangerous player so it's not that passing is better than dribbling it's that both of them are useful, but use them in the right, op right opportunities.